Good morning everyone. I have a tutorial which is just a quick and easy one. It's a way of toning your images using the gradient map tool in Photoshop. So let's just click on the image, bring up all our panels. We have this, we got, we got two different options. Uh, I'm going to go through the, the process that I, I want to use with gradient map first, but then we can go back and we can look at a couple other uh, alternatives to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this little icon at the bottom of the layers palette, and we're going to go up to gradient map, and we're going to change the blend mode of that gradient map to multiply. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to tick on this, or tick, not tick, click, click on this gradient editor box comes up, and then we can uh, go through and play with all the different gradients that are in there. When you first uh, open this up, you'll only have these select few up there, but if you go up uh, to this little pull down menu, you'll find there's a whole lot of other different ones. So I've just gone and added the photographic toning. It'll ask you to uh, add them if you want. and then I can start going and looking through and, and I'm just clicking through all these different presets to see which ones I like. And uh, it's it's it comes down to your, uh, your personal uh, uh, taste as to what you should do. And I'm quite liking that one. It's a pretty nice one. It's one of my favorites actually. So I think maybe we'll stick with that and we click okay. So you can straight up, you can see we've got a, a much nicer look it's got a bit more contrast a bit more interest going on there now the other thing we can do is we can duplicate that photograph that sorry that that layer the, that gradient map and it gets really grungy again if I want to go use my brush tool with a black brush painting on a white mask I can then um, add a little bit more light coming out there so I'm just basically enhancing that with the effect of yeah, um, that kind of a vignette obviously it's a little bit heavy so i'm just going to go over there and add a little bit more light in some of those corners i don't want the blacks to be completely black i'd like to have a little bit of detail in there and then i'm just going to you know put most of the emphasis in the middle of the image which is pretty much what i do with most of my stuff and that's looking quite nice but as you will see we've got a it's fairly underexposed even though it's quite nice it's definitely underexposed so quick way to check is just to look at your levels adjustment layer and bring the white point up to where you want it to be something like that all of a sudden makes it look quite quite spunky but i am going to invert that layer mask command i or control i and i'm going to again use my brush tool painting with white as my foreground color and i'm just going to bring that light up into areas where i want and really enhance that spot lit sort of sand dune effect and you can see I'm using a low opacity and a low flow. So if I um, do that, I can get a much more um, fine control on the brush itself. And that's looking pretty good. So if I turn it on and off, you can see it's really added a bit of a glow. So that's a really nice way to add a bit of uh, life to your aerial photographs. If we go click, hold down the option or the Alt key, on the keyboard and click on the background layer you will see where we started and where we ended up so it's quite quite a nice easy effect obviously in post i will go in and i'd fix up those little splotches there that are that you can see in the image i don't like those i'll get rid of those um, and one thing i always like to do is to add a little white border around the photo just when i'm looking at it and helps make makes me uh, um, get an idea of how it might look in a, in a frame so command option c or control alt c and i'm just going to add a nine centimeter frame and the width and height making sure the relative box is ticked and you can see my canvas extension color is white and click ok and there's my little border hit f on the keyboard to get the full screen and just zoom out and you can see it, it looks quite nice nicely presented Command Z or Control Z will get rid of that. And then we can go back and save that. Now, the other option you could do, let's say if we turn those off, we can go back to the background layer. We can duplicate that, Command J. And then we can go up to Image Adjustments down to Match Color. And if we click on the Neutralize button, you can see what it's doing there. It's kind of 
cutting, taking away a lot of the blue, is trying to um, correct the white balance. And obviously, the white balance is pretty out of whack. And I just like to mess around with the fade a little bit. Don't want it to be too too refined there. Uh, and color intensity, we're going to add a bit more color intensity. It's nice. I can, I can might bomb that right to the top. And also, your luminance. It's nice to add that luminance through there. You can get the image looking quite nice. So click OK. And then we can go back to our gradient map if I mean, we've already got it there. So we can click it open. And then we can add another one. Um, and then obviously this levels layer is going to blow it out completely but we can just adjust the opacity on that and see where we're happy with the effect so that's giving us a different look it's warming it up it's kind of correcting for that blue white balance but I must say I do like the that uh, the, the bluey sort of tones in this and let's bring that back up I think that's a nice looking image Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that quick and easy tutorial.